What's happening everybody? Curtis here back with another amazing YouTube video. A good friend of mine recently decided that he wanted to build a home gym and because I have this monstrosity of a home gym, he asked me to give him a hand. So I gave him some advice on what to order. He ended up settling on a Rogue Monster Light 490, which is a four post 90 inch tall power rack. Uh, he got a st uh, stability piece for it. He got a deadlift bar, an operator bar, some kilogram training plates, which I had never seen before, and those things are nice, like really nice. Definitely kind of want some for myself now that I've seen those. Uh, he also got a trap bar, some other accessory items, a yoke, uh, an echo bike, a Concept 2 rower, and this video is us just putting it all together. It all started with putting his platform, buying all the material, putting it together, hitting anything super thick. So we just did two layers with a uh, horse stall matting and plywood lay over the top of that. So here's the time lapse and some little excerpts here and there. I hope you guys enjoy the build. And I'll see you. All right, so we're gonna build a, a garage gym weightlifting platform. So what we got here, are six 1932nd OSB plywood 4x8 sheets and we have two 5 8 4x8 sheets one of the 4x8 sheets has already been cut in half the idea with this build is it's going to be a 12 foot long platform 8 feet wide it's going to have a uh, Rogue Monster Light 490 series rack on it so it's 49 inches by 49 inches and we'll see where it's at inside the garage here in just a minute. All right, now welcome to the voiceover. Look at me handling four by eight sheets of plywood. What you're looking at is an eight by 12 platform and Brad's sweeping out the first part of his gym. So you see me, I'm swinging some doors open, making sure that things will sort of clear. Obviously this platform will easily move, uh, but I just wanted to make sure we were kind of setting it up where it needed to be. So you see me getting it all squared up. Highly recommend, highly recommend taking time during that step. All right, so everything here is opinion based, of course, but this is the most crucial spot. So when you're laying out your material, you have to get a good idea of where you actually want things. For instance, do you actually want your, your side of your platform to be this close to a wall? If you're doing ollie lifts, you might want to actually center it a little bit closer in the garage. But in here, we're doing mostly power lifting and general strength conditioning. So being eight inches off the wall is fine. Plus, he still plans on using it to store his, his whip. Another thing to consider is if you have doors. So if you have doors to open, make sure that when the door is open, that it's not over the platform. But that's only if you're gonna have things on the platform right there. So we're planning on putting the rack as far forward as possible. So we left more of a gap right here. So the platform will start here and there's enough space for the door to swing all the way open. But anyways, the first layer, uh, one of the more crucial steps. And then the second layer, and of course we lay that down so that we don't have any seams that go all the way through. So we always alternate our layers, something very important obviously something you should do. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. You stand on that corner. So from here all out, it's just about putting screws where they go. Got to make sure that you go through. We have two different lengths of screws, so obviously there's two layers of plywood right now. So we have enough to get through the one three quarter inch piece and into the second piece, but not so much that it goes on the floor. It also helps to bring a two year old because a two year old can run around, jump and entertain you with her cute cowboy boots. Are they cowboy boots or cowgirl boots? But as you can see, we're taking the main center portion that is actually going to be at the top. So obviously we're not going to see the plywood, 
there's going to be black stall matting covering that but we are going to see this nice plywood that runs down the middle he wanted to go full length with the plywood and he decided to do a really nice kind of like cherry-esque stain and you'll see that coming up here pretty quick but it's important incredibly important again like be picky about where you put that board if you don't have it squared up it's not going to be square so take your time get everything squared up and where you want it to be before you screw it down <laughs> All right, so the goal for today, we gotta to cut these horse stall mats. Unpack all these boxes and get that man's garage gym up and going. All right, so here we are with the stall matting. And this, there's really no enjoyment to cutting stall matting. It just kind of all sucks. What I like to do is I like to lay the stall matting down on, so that there's like a difference in elevation. And then I get it all lined up nice and pretty like. And I was having a hard time seeing there's not very good lighting in, in his garage. But I'm using the other stall mat as a straight edge, make a mark with a marker. Now I personally do not like cutting on a square. What I do is I just make a super light cut that goes the entire length. And again, this is super light because you'd be surprised just how quickly you'll be able to cut through this. You'll like fillet through it with a razor knife. You're gonna go through blades like crazy. I think cutting the four stall mats for this platform, I, I went through three blades, two or three blades. Pretty sure three blades, but it's worth it. So what you do is you make your first score line and you make it nice and straight. You make it nice and light, enough so that you can get the tip of the blade in, but not too much deeper. And then after that, you just start kind of flaying it out as you go down. And you can see I cut backwards sometimes, forward sometimes. It just takes a little bit of experience to figure out what, it, what is going to work for you in the situation. Uh, just don't, don't rush it. That's really, if I had a single piece of advice for cutting stall matting with a razor knife, it's one, don't use any power tools because you will quickly destroy said power tool. And I might know from experience because I might be a, someone who tried that. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Instead, be like me where I'm patient. I use a razor knife and I just move nice and slow and there's no rush. Just kind of chill out. Have fun with your, have fun with your buddy. If you don't have a buddy, go find one. Please. But as you can see, just cut forward, cut backward. I think y'all are sick of hearing me talking about cutting. You, you, what you can see is that I've shoved, I don't even know what it is, but I shoved something underneath there to increase the elevation even more. I've even seen people use like four inch diameter PVC pipes. Oh yeah, I was using a brick. Uh, I've seen people use four inch diameter PVC pipes and that gives you a really big hill right where you wanna make the cut. And what that does is as you go through the, there's no layers to it, it's just one layer, but as you make your small light cuts, it causes it to split open kind of like a fissure in the earth. But here it is, all everything's cut, laid out, and again, everything with this platform is take your time, take your time, take your time. That's why I had to fast forward the footage. That because I put like a bajillion screws in this thing. Now these screws on the top, uh, I usually buy them, they sell a green outdoor decking screw, and when you put the green screws in, you, you will not see it on the black, unless you're looking for it. If you buy the tan decking screws, you'll clearly see it, and I personally just don't like the look. And when I'm going to take time to do something, I want it to be something I like to do. So now begins the fun part. Let's get everything unpackaged and figure out what everything is, get it set aside. What you can see me doing right now is I'm grabbing parts for the power rack itself, because obviously the power rack is going to be the first thing we put in. It's the biggest piece. It's the, the main piece. Uh, and additionally, if I take anything else out, if we need to move that platform for whatever reason, uh, you're only going to want 
the least amount of equipment actually set up. If you have all the other equipment set up, you got to move all that other equipment in order to move the platform because you don't like where it's at. But he had a Rogue RML 490C color rack, same color blue that's in my gym because it's an awesome color. I'm such a, a nerd that I can identify what's in the boxes just based on the code that's on the box. I know that the boxes say what they are typically, but I can actually recognize the codes that, and it's not just Rogue's codes either. I can recognize Sorenex's, uh, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I think I may have a problem, but at least my problem is constructive in nature, I guess. But what I recommend you do when you're putting together a four post rack is identify if there's any, if there's any branding. So for instance, on rogues, you're going to get two posts that have the rogue branding on the side of them and two of them that don't. And by rogue branding, I don't mean the R that there's a laser cut R on the monster light series. That's not the, what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the sticker. So figure out your two sides, figure out where you want your branding to be and take your time, like actually choose where you want it. Don't just say, I don't care and then put it wherever because I guarantee eventually after you stare at it for long enough, you're gonna suddenly care. So figure out where you want them and just set it up one side at a time. So you're gonna set up for this uh, two 43 inch cross members with 90 inch uprights so you see the first side standing up right there and it'll stand up on its own for the most part like I wouldn't like put my kids underneath it but it's gonna stay there just fine and then we put the second side together and I this is gonna sound weird but I, I own the rogue wrenches the 15 16 wrenches they're awesome wrenches people like I've got two of them I've got two 15 16 socket setups You'd be surprised how quickly you can throw a rack together from Rogue if you have that set up. So as risky as this looks, this is the second time I've ever put a power rack together where I've had somebody else there to help me. I normally do this step you see right now just by myself. I need more friends, I think is what this is really saying. But I recommend, so put the pull-up bar up. And the one thing I didn't say earlier is that the only screws that are actually tight, tight, like actually tight, are the ones that are holding the actual sides together. So that pull-up bar, I didn't use a wrench on it. It's just on there loose. And I'm about to put up the, the gusset, uh, the beam with the gusset on it. Uh, that's not gonna be tight either. It's gonna be just held in loose. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff to spice up your pen. Yeah, I just thought you'd get a kick out of the uh, radio advertisement there. Anyways, uh, so set your screws up loose at first, and then after everything's actually put together, like you got the stabilizer piece as well, then go back and actually tighten them up. Then what you saw me doing earlier is I was marking the holes with a uh, permanent marker, then move the power rack completely, depending on which holes you're gonna put it in. I just recommend move it completely because you gotta take a drill to it. I don't wanna mar up any racks. And I do things right, and I had my friend stand on it Well, I, again, got everything just kind of in, not tight all the way down. I'm using lag screws here, so if you go by five inch, I'm sorry, five eighths inch lag screws, 
Uh, it works perfectly with the Rogue platforms. And you only need to be thick enough to go through, for his case, you need to go through a three quarter inch stall mat or piece of plywood, and then two more three quarter inch pieces of plywood. So I, I wanna say we only got like two inch lag screws. You don't need as much as you might think. There's three bolts per leg. From there, it's just a matter of unboxing. This is this is actually so much fun. If you've never if you've never had the opportunity to have a friend purchase essentially a, a pretty in-depth gym all at once, you are missing out because just going through the boxes, it's like freaking Christmas and it's not even your stuff. So here we are putting the yoke together. This is my fourth yoke I've assembled from Rogue, this exact model, the Y1. I recommend the Y1 over the Y2 for most garage gym owners because most garage gyms don't have a door that is tall enough for the Y2. So I recommend obviously you put the feet together first, then you put the uprights on. The instructions even detail it out. Uh, something to keep in mind when you're putting this equipment together is whole, so like which direction the bolts are going. Make sure they're all going the same direction. Just one of those things that bothers me. All right, so here's where we're at. Yolks all put together. Plates are just thrown in the yoke now to keep them out of the way. Decided to just do eight of the feet for the, eight of the bolts for the feet instead of doing all 12. Everything's nice, tightened down square. Now we're just working on clearing up the space for the vehicle and getting some conditioning equipment put together. All right, let's get real here for a moment. Dear Rogue, your staples are ridiculous. They are a huge pain in the butt, but they, they do work. They keep the bar very well packaged. The, the best luck I've had is uh, you bend the legs on the inside with a pair of needle nose, and then you pry out the, the staple Every year, thousands of dollars in cash and assets are seized during drug busts by local law enforcement. The matter that we're taking from the should be used against these So, where does that money go? Fox 45 News investigates and has the answer. Tonight on Fox 45 News at 10. Oh, I'm so jealous of you. The aftermath of assembling a home gym. So while this guy finishes putting his echo bike together, I'm gonna work on breaking down all these boxes and putting them into my truck. So here we are, everything's packed up, ready for our dump trip. Just gotta strap it down. But yeah, so uh, in case you were wondering, a S. The RML 490, a Rogue Echo Bike, Concept 2 rower, a beam, a deadlift bar, an operator bar, a yoke, and all the fixings. Uh, yeah, a bit of a full truckload, but we're gonna make it work. No, there's space in there for it. Yeah. There you have it. Concept 2 rower, Rogue Echo Bike, beautiful. A uh, AB2 adjustable bench, nice rack, beautiful home gym, love the color. Uh, like I said, it belonged to a really good friend of mine. And uh, this gym will always hold a spe uh, special place in my heart. So that's the video, I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any comments, comment down below on what you think you would have done different. Do you think the platform's thick enough? Do you think that the amount of space on the side of the platform is thick enough? Like I said, let me know below. Also, so if you stuck around this long, I appreciate you watching the whole video. I know it's a lot of fast forward and gym builds aren't, you know, always the most interesting thing in the world. Uh, that gym build was something near and dear in my heart. And if, if you know me at any personal level, you'll know why. Uh, But yeah, it was a good gym build. It was a good time. Uh, very good times with good friends. Drank a couple good beers while putting the platform together, putting the gym together. And what we ended up with was an awesome result. So the, the platform itself that you saw built was eight by 12. 
beautifully finished. Uh, looked really good, that, that nice like kind of reddish hue with the blue power rack. I mean, hell, he even got the, the blue Cerakote deadlift bar. Everything looked real sharp. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you'll continue to tune in. So if you can, to tune in, so there's like a like and a subscribe button. So go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it. If you didn't like it, comment down below. Tell me why you didn't like it. And subscribe and I'll see you at the next video.